Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to start uh, getting into Pyro Simulation. Uh, this is a, a, beginning a beginner's tutorial for Pyro, but it is not a Houdini beginner's tutorial. Um, so there are gonna be things like groups in Blast nodes and setting up Geo that I'm going to expect you to know already. I'll, I'll briefly go over it, but I won't be going step by step um, over the, the real basic stuff. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating the effect that you see on your screen right now. Just a general overview of what I'll be covering. In the introduction, I'm going to go over uh, the process step by step, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm going to explain how I've imported the geo and set up the groups uh, for our emitters. I'm going to go over the main Pyro setup, which is uh, how to source your points, um, the Pyro source setup, uh, using an attribute noise for fuel and temperature attributes. I'm going to go over the pyro solver, caching, and the pyro bake volume setup. So with all that being said, let's head over to Houdini and get started. Okay, here we are in Houdini. Um, I've got a torch uh, here. It's got a little mega scan body and some custom geo that I just modeled up real quick. Um, I'm going to supply this in the, the demo file that I'll post with this video. Um, but really, it's just some FBX imports. Um, some transforms, match sizes, and some quick material set up, which these are just for display uh, for this part. Um, these materials will be, will be rebuilt uh, for Karma in the next video. Um, and then when I've just got a torch prep file here, and this is just object merging the FBX, uh, grouping them, uh, and then transforming them to a proper scale uh, for a sim, and some output nulls, or nulls rather than outputs. Um, and then in the third uh, geo container here, we don't have anything. Um, and this is where we're going to go ahead and start the tutorial. For a pyro sim, um, we're going to need some, some source points. Uh, and to get those source points, I'm basically just going to import this geo um, and then blast away everything but this, this cloth. Um, so we'll go ahead and do an object merge. go out here to our prep file and I'm just gonna grab out torch source and hit accept and now you see we've got our geo here and then I'm gonna do a blast and I'm gonna select the cloth and delete non-selected which leaves us with this and I'm gonna go ahead and just hide other objects so we just see this geo. Um, so next up I'm just going to do a little cleanup and just do an attribute uh, delete here uh, to make sure we're just getting just the geometry like so. I'm just putting asterisks in here which just means it'll accept all these attributes and now we have uh, some geo. So first up we're going to do a points from volume points right here and plug this in and we're gonna see this so you can, you can see it it's very hard to see right now but we got two little points um, in there so we just need to uh, change the point separation right here um, for this I'm just gonna go zero zero one and that's gonna give us a lot of points probably way too much for our preview so let's just cut that to a tenth and we'll just use that many for now and we're going to go down and up the jitter scale here as well just to give us some randomization and I think I'm going to go ahead and just add a few more points just so we have something to look at so let's try that should be enough um, and I think all we have to do from here up, oh, let's go make sure all of this is set up. So for point for source type, let's go ahead and just make ge geometry. We want a sparse volume. Here's our point separation, our jitter scale. Um, and let's go ahead and just create an output group as well and call this points. Um, 
I'm just doing this just to make sure we don't get any extra geo or anything in there. Uh, and I think that's it uh, for the point separation. So these are basically the, the points that are going to be uh, sourced by the pyrosim and then turned into fire and smoke. So next up is the pyro source. Um, and this is a really awesome node, but it's all, it can be kind of complex as well. So with the pyro source, uh, we're going to need uh, some particle separation. Obviously, this is probably way too low. So let's start with um, 0 0.009. Uh, and just a, just a caveat here, um, depending on your system, you may want lower values than I'm using. Uh, I'm using a pretty, a pretty kind of hardcore rig. So, just know if you if you start seeing system slow down, you may have to adjust these numbers, um, just to let you know. So then we're going to initialize and let's go ahead. Hmm, let's just do a source fuel. Um, we can just double check th through these. Um, we have two attributes that initial that 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 initializes um, the fuel and the temperature and those can be at default values for now um, and these will basically kind of ignite uh, the the pyrosim um, next up we're going to need some noise uh, so we're dropping out an attribute noise and what this is going to do is it's going to create some variation uh, in these source points um, right now, you can see that we're set at um, a vector with CD, uh, which we don't really care for, we don't really need, um, it's kind of useless. So let's change this to float, and then we're going to affect our fuel and temperature attributes. And we'll go ahead and visualize that, and you can see we've got um, an attribute here. So let's go ahead and change some of these values because obviously just pure red isn't going to help us out. This basically is like total, total, total burn at this point, which we don't want. Um, we want to make we want to make it look like pieces of the cloth are igniting, not that this whole thing is just kind of going up in fire. Uh, so to do that, let's go ahead and set this to min max, um, and we'll go negative four to say just say four and we're going to get something more like this um, then we've got some other options down here in the noise pattern itself um, let's go ahead and set this element size to something like 0 0.08 and now you can see we've got this nice pattern um, let's go ahead and click animate noise and set this pulse duration to two and now if we play back we can see let's hit this little clock down here do a real time we can see we've got this nice varied pattern and basically what's going to happen is this temperature is going to be in the purple zones um, the temperature is very low and in the red zones it's high so it cr it'll create this varying uh, fire look for us instead of just being like a stream of fire okay and then after we have this attribute noise kind of going uh, we need to rasterize uh, these attributes so for that, we're going to pick a volume, uh, rasterize attributes, hook those up, we're going to get this, uh, so we have to pick the attributes that we're going to, uh, to rasterize, right, so fuel, temperature, And we get this kind of low res volume box. Uh, we'll fix that in a second. So voxel size, let's try four for now. And we'll go five for particle size. And that should be it. We can go ahead and play this black, see what we get. And we've got a nice there. You know what? I'm gonna change my display settings dark so we can see this better and there we go we've got this kind of smoky volume that's gradually uh, changing over time which is exactly what we want so after we rasterize uh, those two attributes for fuel and temperature 
the next thing we're going to do is add a pyro solver. And this is where all the, the kind of magic happens. So we'll drop that down, make sure we're at frame one, and hook that up. So we're not going to have much in the beginning here. So we hit play. That's uh, not much going on, right? So we have a lot of setup to do here. So first, let's go to sourcing um, and see what kind of options we have. So we're getting density, temperature, burn, and flame, uh, but we don't really have, we don't have this burn source volume. Uh, so we're going to change that to fuel, and then we're going to get something like this. And let's go ahead and just double check. We have velocity coming in. I think that should be it under our sourcing. So let's go back to setup and look at our voxel size. So right now we've just kind of got this, looks like a, just a few voxels, just a couple. So obviously we need, we need to lower this. So let's go to 0 0.004 and now we've got something much better. Um, and those of you that are paying attention will see that on our volume rasterize, this is the voxel size. So if we wanted to, we could kind of just, we could copy this parameter, go to our, our volume here, and then, and, you know, let's, let's do the verse. Let's copy the, the parameter from the volume rasterize and paste it in here as a relative reference. Just so we don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth between these. Um, other things under setup, make sure you're on a sparse, uh, sparse simulation type. This should be the default. Um, and everything else should be fine in here. Um, let's go ahead and check out our sourcing again. And make sure everything is set up in here. It is. And then let's go ahead and go over to fields. Um, and fields is where we're going to kind of between fields and shape, or we're going to kind of dial in this look a little bit. So we're going to uh, click emit from flame, and we're going to do to 0.45. Um, you'll see as this starts to go, we get something like this. So this might be a bit too much. So let's go ahead and just go up. Let's do a lower voxel size just for the sake of simulation here. Make it a lot faster. There we go. So obviously this isn't what we want. <laughs> um, so there's kind of a balance between the pyro solver and a node that we're going to talk about in a minute called the bake, uh, bake pyro volumes or pyro bake volumes, um, which is how we're going to start to dial in the shader. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and make sure we've got a flame field under here. And let's go ahead and dial the lifespan down to three. And run it again. Now it shouldn't be as crazy. We're getting this kind of weird look, which is okay for now. Um, and I think that's good for, for fields. Let's go ahead and go over to our shape. Um, this is kind of the main area that you can uh, really start to dial in the look uh, of your simulation. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of wind. Um, and a lot of these settings are just trial and error. Um, it's just me messing around and figuring out what, what, what works best. Um, results might vary depending on your scene and what you're trying to do. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this again. And we're getting something much better. Now, resolution is still pretty low um, because I just, for the sake of you not having to sit here and watch, um, <clears throat> the resolution is a little bit low because I just don't want you to have to sit here and wait for this to render. Um, but this should be a really good start um, for a, a torch. Um, so Last but not least, let's go ahead and make sure we're outputting everything that we need here. And I think we're good. Um, so if we go to shape again, 
let's talk about these a little bit. So disturbance um, is going to kind of deal with the internal uh, noise, and the turbulence is kind of a wind noise. Um, shredding and flame expansion, we don't need these. Um, if you wanted to do like a little bit of a lava look, you could add some viscosity. Um, if this is traveling a bit too high for your taste, um, we can also lower this buoyancy. So let's try. And again, I'm just experimenting here just to see what we get. Yeah, see, now this, the flame isn't rising nearly as high as it was before. Um, again, this is kind of uh, to your taste and, and kind of the effect that you're going for. But as a starting kind of fire, uh, this is definitely good. So I'm just going to change this back to one. Uh, and then let's go ahead and cache this out. So I'm going to drop a file cache node. Run this in here. And I'm just going to save my scene. So in save my scene, it's going to automatically just save this out. Um, so we don't have to do any pathing or anything. And then hit save disk. And I'm going to pause this recording uh, and come back once it's done caching. All right, so here we are back with this file that's been cached. Um, just to play a little bit of this back. That's uh, so one thing to remember, this is still just viewport render. Um, so it will differentiate a little bit when we start shading this thing. Um, in the next video, we're going to do shading and rendering in Karma. Um, I just wanted to show you that this cache, what this cache looks like. Um, I did do a few different things. Uh, so I cached this a couple of times. I just wanted to share what I've changed on the Pyrosolver. Um, under sourcing, I changed the temperature, the source scale here to 0.5, um, which helps not have this thing burn super, super high. Um, and I also... And here under fields, I lowered the admission scale a little bit. And I think that's, oh, and under setup, this is important, the time scale. I set that to 0.5. Um, this will help kind of slow things down and not make it as frantic. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, I, I did up, obviously I did up my voxel size for, for to get a really nice uh, cache out of this. Um, to give you an idea, this took about an, I don't know, about a half hour to cache on a Core i9 with, um, with a 4090 uh, graphics card. Just to kind of give you an idea of, of what kind of times you can expect from these. Um, and that's it. In the next video, I'm going to get into uh, how to shade this and get it rendered in Karma. I'll see you there.